Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to all of you. Um, Vaughan, nice to see you briefly. Um, and let me thank, like others have, all the co-organizers of this event, but also acknowledge Vaughan your leadership in, in convening us. Um, the discussions have been excellent and I have really enjoyed participating yesterday and in this session just concluded. Um, colleagues, much has been said throughout these discussions about the importance of science and technology in this time of global crisis, about the importance of integrating interdisciplinary scientific evidence into policy at all levels of governance, about the importance of open science and of global STI cooperation and collaboration. Indeed, COVID-19 has placed science and technology in the public and policy eye in ways that are unprecedented in our lifetimes. The UN Secretary General has called this a time for science and solidarity, emphasizing the need for trust in science as the world copes not only with a deadly pandemic, but an equally dangerous epidemic of misinformation. So in this penultimate session of the conference, we need to stand back a little bit and take a bird's eye view to consider what we are learning about the evolving impacts of the pandemic um, on STI itself, about the ways in which science and technology communities across the spectrum of fields and disciplines have responded and are responding to the pandemic about the response readiness of science and technology communities in different parts of the world, about the obstacles and in some cases vulnerabilities we have encountered as we work at the science policy practice interface in this emergency situation. And based on these considerations, think about the opportunities and challenges we now face as we rethink the nature and the role of global science and technology collaboration, its structures, its support mechanisms, its agendas, and its theories of change. So we have a fantastic group of panelists um, to share ideas on these difficult issues. They include Dr. Marcia McNutt, president of the US National Academy of Sciences, Sir Peter Gluckman, who chairs the International Network for Government Science Advice and is president-elect of the International Science Council. We have hopefully with us Dr. Marion Nkanza, who is a member of the Executive Committee of the Global Young Academy and comes from the Kwame Krumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana. And we also have with us Under Secretary General Fabrizio Hochschild, who is a special advisor to the UN Secretary General. A very warm welcome to all of you colleagues and a big thank you for making time to join us today. I know it is very late for some of you. In terms of the format, following your interventions, we will hear from a number of UN officials starting with Ms. Carla Mukavi from the Food and Agriculture Organization. And we also, I believe, have an intervention from Ms. Sophie Maddens from the International Te Telecommunications Union. After that, I hope we have some time for, to take questions from the online audience, but I also encourage you panelists to think about the questions that you have for each other.